Hello everybody, I'm Dan. This tutorial is about negative bytes, the bitwise not operator, sometimes known as the inversion operator. Uh, basically it's this little tilde here. So um, I actually reshot this video. I came up with a great idea on something else that I wanted to add to it. Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and open up web browser to, uh, to my website, thegpu.com. And I'm going to come over here and select the menu and then see tutorials. We'll scroll down here to negative bytes, bitwise not. So this tutorial is going to build on concepts from bits and bytes and adding bytes. Um, I've decided to introduce this relatively advanced concept early on because I believe I can explain it in such a way that it can be comprehended relatively easy using examples. Now understanding this concept will make me memory management much easier to master. Um, let's first type out the leftmost bit here. So in mathematics the term whole numbers um, are represented as non-fractional values greater than and including 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now also in mathematics, the term integers expand whole numbers to include non-fractional negative values, right? Negative 4, 3, 2, 1, so on and so forth there. Now there are three basic data types in C that hold non-fractional values. Short, int, and long, and uh, we could technically throw char into the mix, but it's, it's a little special there. Um, I'll talk about that in a later video. The sizes of these data types depend upon the architecture and compiler, but later on down the road I'll show you why you should always use the size of operator to determine the actual byte length. Now the short data type is most often contained in only two bytes. The leftmost bit of these data types represents the sign of the value being held. Zero is positive and one is negative. Now we learned from my previous tutorial that a short with a value of three would look like this, right? First byte would hold all zeros. Next byte would have six zeros followed by a one in the twos place and a one in the ones place. So what would a short with a value of negative three, so would a short with a value of negative three look like this, right? Uh, in other words, we just flip the first sign bit there and then this would make it three, negative three. Well, the answer is no, and I'll, let's examine why. We have to actually think about, you know, how, uh, how addition is done, right? So you want to make sure you're familiar with specifically the adding bytes tutorial there. So let's talk about addition the wrong way. Now, following the rules of binary addition from my previous tutorial, let's add 3 plus 3, right? Um, 3 and 3. So add the 1s, that becomes a 0, we'll carry this 1. These two ones become a, uh, right. you, can, you can combine the two ones and carry it from either one of these three, but anyway, you always do, you do have an extra one, so you drop that down, right? And so basically, and then a one and all these zeros drop that down. So you end up with a one in the fours place, a one in the twos place, which equals six. Fantastic, now let's change that leading bit to a one, a negative, and then we should be adding negative three plus three, right? So if we just change this bit here and then we do the addition on there, um, this doesn't come out to zero, right? Negative three plus three, that does not come out to zero. So using that logic, we ended up with a total fail. <clears throat> Let's talk about addition the correct way. So we know that we need to come up with some bit representation for negative three that when added to three will equal zero. So let's do some experimenting, and um, what sort of binary pattern can we add to 3 to produce a number with a 1 in every bit, right? And that's easy. So here's our number 3, and if we just inv invert all of these bits, right, on whatever byte this is, we don't care what this is, then if we add this all up, we end up with um, another number that's all 1s. Great, mission accomplished. So at this point, we don't care what the second number is or what the end result is. Now let's figure out what we can add to the end result to produce a number with a zero in every bit, okay? So taking this number here, we're gonna start off with that up top here. We don't know what it is, we don't care, right? And we're going to add a one to it. So one and one, zero, we end up carrying the one. Um, and we have this cascading effect all the way down here, right? Till we get to the very end and we end up with this, this extra one over here, right? But, uh, you know, great mission accomplished again. We ended up with, uh, with zero, right? So what happened to the red one? Well, it can't fit in the space allocated for a short data type, so basically it disappears or overflows, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter, can't fit. Um, we'll, we'll go over some, of the, some other stuff later on as far as memory goes, but uh, 
So basically, in order to produce negative three, we simply added a byte with every bit inverted, plus we added one, right? So if we start off with three here, we invert all the bits, and then we add a one to it, right? You can do the, the math real quick here, and you can see that we do end up with zero, okay? So there we have it. Start with a positive number, simply invert all the bits, and add one to produce the negative value. So essentially, this plus this, we know equals negative three right so come down here and take that newfound knowledge we take three and then we take this this short and this short we add them together and we end up with this right here and when we add all these these bits together we end up with zero so we know this number here is equal to negative three okay so that's that's how it works so let's uh, let's do what if we start off with a negative number and we apply the same logic right so here's our negative three we invert all the bits, right? And then we add one. And as you can see, you know that uh, this, this number plus this number equals three because uh, you got a one in the twos column and a one in the ones column there, and we end up with zero. All right, so um, here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and run some code right here, and then we're gonna go into this deeper understanding stuff here. Um, and I might actually jump down to this bit wide, that stuff there, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna move, move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcuts, new key, next finish. And then let's go ahead and open that up. First thing you wanna do if you're new to my videos, type in GCC, you should see this come up right here. Now, however, if you see like, a, Command not recognized, unre unrecognized phrase or keyword. Watch my video on installing and configuring GCC. You want to make sure you get that done first. See, I'll have to the screen, cd backslash, go to root. I'm going to make a directory here called cdemo, right? And I already have that folder, but if you don't, it will create it for you. We'll change directories to the cdemo folder. And I forgot what I want to call this negative bytes. Okay, I'm going to make a directory here called uh, negative bytes. <coughs> directories to that folder and I could use notepad to do this but I'm just going to go ahead and throw this up in notepad plus plus bytes.c right all right let's bring the browser window back over here and copy all this stuff here <coughs> over and paste this. If you've been watching my previous tutorial, don't worry about the print bits function. Um, it's just there to display all the bits the, for whatever value we pass in there. So the, let me see. What do I got commented there? I actually want to comment this portion of it here too as well. Um, so let's come out here and save that. Okay, uh, GCC and tab and minus O for our output. And we'll, we'll call this negative bytes to create the exe on that. Let's do a directory there. There's our negative bytes exe, right? Oh, geez, that was great. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so basically this is just actually showing you all of the stuff there that I just went over there, right? Three plus three, there's our, our bit pattern and everything like that equals six, right? Um, if we do three plus, you know, the, the wrong way of doing it where we just flip this, this first bit right here, right? We end up with, you know, this bit pattern right here, which actually this bit pattern up here ends, ends up being negative 32,765 and add those together, we end up with this number here. Right, and then of course this shows you the bit pattern for three, and then our bit pattern for negative three, and we do end up with zero on that. Okay, it's all fairly straightforward. Just want to demonstrate that with some code. Play around with this sort of stuff there. Um, you know the the zero B format for for the basically setting the bits. Right, GCC understands this, but not all compilers do. Um, so. We'll just go ahead and ax all that stuff right now, and then uh, I'm going to talk about some some interesting stuff here. 
I am going to do this here. All right. Okay. Um, so what I've got, what I've got here, and I'll save that real quick there. And I've got this bit pattern right here, right, which is as large as this can get. So the first, the first byte here, the first bit of this short value here is actually a zero, meaning this is a positive value, right? Um, and then of course y is equal to the number one, and we're going to display x and y. And then Z, we're gonna go and add them together and we're gonna see what we end up with there, right? So let's go ahead and clear our screen on this. Let's recompile. Oh, because I commented this stuff out here, I need to do a short do. commented out the data type declaration there. All right, let's go ahead and clear our screen. And now I'll run negative bytes. <clears throat> okay, so um, started off with, with this one here, right? Which is the positive number 32,767 is what this represents. And then one, of course, right? And then when we added them together, we're displaying Z down here, right? We end up with by adding one to this, we end up with this number right here, which is Z, which is actually negative 32,768, okay? So that's what happens when we actually go one more than the, than the maximum value over here, right? And I'm gonna bring back over my website here. So what I wanna show you guys is this little illustration I made here, right? So the minimum value for a short uh, two bytes short, right, is negative 32,768, right, and this just kind of shows like, you know, a segmented number line here going all the way up to the max, which is 32,767. Now, when we added 1 to 32,767, we ended up with the number negative 32,768, right, so like jumped back to the start, right, now what I'm going to do is move that off screen here and we are going to uh, just comment that out and we're going to run a little program that will kind of bring all this together here and make sense here in just a second. So um, I'm going to set uh, Z. Let's grab this line of code right here. And paste that over there. And Z. Right. Okay, so we're gonna start Z off. You know what? I'm actually going to make it on zero, right? So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Alright, that looks pretty good there. Make sure I actually got that many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excellent. So we're going to start off at Z, right? And we're going to display it to the console, right? And it'll show the, the number in there, right? Uh, while one just basically is the same thing as while true. This is an infinite loop here. It'll keep on going. I'll show you how to pause it, how to kill it, so on and so forth here, right? So first we're going to do that. And um, then we're going to have some space in there. And actually what I think I'm going to do instead of that, I'm going to do it. A slash T for a tab there. And then we're going to display all the bits of that pattern there. All right, so let's come up here and save this. And maybe I'll make the code change on that later there. All right, let's clear the screen, recompile, rerun. <clears throat> okay, so what it's doing is it's looping through and as you can see, the numbers are increasing, right? And you'll see the bit patterns increase here too as well. You can simply click on this to stop it, right? Left click with your mouse, right? And then hit the escape on your keyboard to start it again. All right, so what's going to happen here is once this gets up to 32,767, we're just going to uh, pause it a little bit there. Something interesting happens at that point. And we 
are almost there. Okay, we'll scroll back up here just a little bit there. <clears throat> okay, so adding one to all these bits there, you can see 66, they added one there, bada boom, bada bing. And then there's our overflow, and so actually negative, or 32,767 becomes negative 32,768, right? And then we keep on adding to it here, right? So you can all, you can see that we, we start off with this basic this overflow, and now this first leftmost bit is actually one, and we're dealing with all negative numbers at this point in time, right? And as we add, add one, the numbers become larger again. So basically what this, what this is doing here, and I'm just going to just kind of scoot this over and I'm going to bring back over this here. <clears throat> so this visualization here is, is pretty poor, but here's accurate vi visualization, right? Um, we can see that, you know, right now it's actually somewhere right along here, right? And, you know, it's cruising around almost like a, you know, in a, in a circular motion here, right? We just passed up zero and then we'll keep on going until we hit, you know, 32,767, and then boom, all of a sudden we go all the way down to its minimum value. So the point that I'm trying to make with this accurate visualization here is that these two numbers are actually only one number apart, okay? They're, they're, well, I mean, with uh, binary-wise, they're only one number apart, right? So once you understand that concept there on, on, on how the bits you know, equate into actual numbers and everything like that, and then you understand that these two numbers are actually sitting right next to each other, then you'll have a, a much better idea on that. Okay, the uh, the last thing that I want to talk about here, and I'll just let that run in the background there and do its thing there, is um, the bitwise not operator. So the, the operator, the not operator here is basically the tilde, or you can call it the inversion operator, whatever, you know, you, however you remember it there. It inverts each individual bit of a value and then returns the result. So if you follow along with everything above, then this statement down, these two statements down here will make perfect sense. And by the way, do not confuse the bitwise not operator with the logical not operator, okay? So let's pop back over the code there. Once again, to pause it, you can just simply click, escape starts it again. Um, you can hit Control C to actually break out of it, and then you're good to go there. So let's go ahead and clear our screen, pop back to the code window here, and we'll comment out that. And what did I do? Oh, yeah, this is what I want to uncomment here. Okay, so, and of course I need to put back in my data type declarations there. Okay, so what, what we're doing here is we're just setting this equal to, you know, just basically an integer literal here, right? Uh, short x equals 3, right? And then short y, we're doing is not x, bitwise not x. And as you know, this will invert every single um, bit there, and then we do plus 1. So let's save that. Let's come back up here.